Hurricane Dennis is coming on shore as we speak, bringing a lot of rain, lots of wind, and causing a lot of damage. Right now, it is a very powerful Category 3 hurricane, and its pressure, its current pressure, is at the sixth lowest pressure on record. Well, let's head back to our storm tracker, Jim Cantore. He is live in Gulf Breeze, uh, Florida. Now, Jim, we lost your signal about an hour ago. The hurricane came on shore about an hour ago. Can you tell us what it was like as you experienced the worst of Hurricane Dennis? Well, we definitely went through the western side of it, Paul. Winds uh, came out into the northeast, then due north then northwest, then southwest, which is what they are now, kind of a west-southwest direction. It's brightened up uh, quite a bit. So that dry air, which I would believe really choked this thing off, thank goodness. Uh, this came in more like an opal than it did uh, than an Ivan. That's for, that's for sure. That is, that is a very, very good thing. I'll tell you that right now because uh, we had winds maybe 90 miles an hour in three. I, I, could, I could stand out in the middle of this. That's not to say that we didn't have damage, all right? 90 miles an hour can do a lot of damage. But a lot of things that we saw, a lot of the roofs and trees uh, that we saw did stay intact pretty well here. After we come out of this video, I want to show you what we got behind me. You can see, you know, these planted crepe myrtles. A couple of them, sure, snapping off. You see that roof back there? Eddie, pan over to that roof. That thing, during the height of the storm, was flapping up and down. But the good news is, because of the roof flaps that they have to have to code here, that roof stayed intact. All right? I could, I've never seen anything like it. Look at how long that roof is. It's got to be 50 yards long, and that thing was just flapping up and down. Some of the trees that we were watching here over to the uh, west, you could see them. Uh, obviously, a few of those did come down. I mean, some of them were dead. Some of them obviously damaged last year from Ivan. Those uh, fell fury, if you will, to, uh, to Dennis's winds. But no way did we get to even 100 mile an hour wind gust in through here. That's for sure. The problem is, is we faced our satellite truck in anticipation of a storm that was going to come into our west. So we protected that dish uh, from an easterly wind and eventually a southeast wind, not a northwest wind. And that's why we couldn't come live to you guys. Power is out over Escambia County. Power is out over much of Santa Rosa County as well. But, uh, you know, for the people watching us that have evacuated, I, I think you can breathe a little easier here as we work our way on through uh, the afternoon. Obviously, I haven't seen anything on the beach, and I can't uh, attest to that, but this storm did come in farther uh, east to the, than, uh, than Ivan did. That's bringing our hurricane expert, Dr. Steve Lyons. And Steve, what happened to this storm uh, as it came ashore? Did it just weaken rapidly and fall apart? Well, Jim, we, we have a very tight wind field, and it was weakening at landfall. But we've had some reports of some pretty strong winds, and it hasn't been necessarily in the eye wall that's very tiny. Valparaiso has gusted to 83 miles per hour. We have a couple of uh, Weather Channel friends, uh, Roger Edwards, uh, Storm Prediction Center. That's uh, National Weather Service, and R.J. Evans have reported a wind gust at 78 miles per hour in Pensacola Bay. The strongest winds over the next few hours are going to be in this northern eye wall where there's still some significant strong thunderstorms and very heavy rain. Where's that moving? It's going to be moving into Milton, Florida, Allentown, Florida, Pace, Fidelis, and Bruton over the next few hours. So watch out there for some significant winds, possibility of some damaging winds to structures blowing off uh, uh, some uh, poorly constructed uh, building roofs, things like that. Now what's going to happen over the next uh, uh, 24 hours or so as the system moves inland, it's going to take some fairly strong winds with it wind strong enough to produce some uh, wind damage, minor wind damage and power outages in particular. And keep in mind, way down here, we're still getting some strong winds, 40, 48, 52 miles per hour. The highest surge we've seen reported so far is 10 feet in Franklin County, way over here in central Florida panhandle. We don't have any reports here yet down uh, just to the southeast of Pensacola, but we'll continue to monitor that. Now let's look at the impact inland. Okay, this, that core of strong winds is going to move inland, and those tropical storm winds are going to move inland. Get your batteries ready and your flashlights ready for tonight, Montgomery. We could see some power outages there as well. Widespread power outages will probably be confined to this area within the coastal zone, but it's possible for power outages through early tomorrow morning to extend into this yellow area. We've actually had some fairly strong wind gusts and heavy rain in New Orleans, but it hasn't been up into the range that would cause any significant damage. Back to you in the studio. Thanks, Dr. Lyons. Well, our coverage continues as Hurricane Dennis moves ashore. And we are continuing to find the hurricane force gust 
across uh, the uh, Gulf Coast of Florida. And, and the and landfall was occurring about an almost an hour ago at 225 Central Time. And it came across Santa Rosa Island. That is a barrier island with Pensacola Beach just to the west of it. It was a Category 3 hurricane. And we're still continuing to see the impacts. The eye is now past Interstate 10. And take a look at the video as Hurricane Dennis was moving ashore. Winds gusting well over hurricane force continues to battle not only the coast but also inland and this will become a huge inland rainfall threat and a flood threat as we head over the next several days. Stay tuned. Local on the 8th is coming up.